February wrap up. Uh, I read seven books this month, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started with just the audiobooks that I listened to. The first one was To the Lighthouse by Virginia Woolf. I don't know if you'll be able to see this cover because of the glare. Uh, I've never read anything by Virginia Woolf before, and uh, this is a title that I've heard mentioned quite often, so I thought I'd go ahead and give it a try. Now, I could waste all of our times by kind of going into details of the plot, because to be quite honest, I'm not sure there was one. Um, I did not get anything out of this book. All, all I kind of could make out of it was that there was a family with some friends on this island and they wanted to make a trip to this lighthouse. Um, the boy was very excited about it. His father kept shooting the idea down because of weather conditions and the sea was too rough and um, it's told in a very stream of consciousness type format, which is fine. But the fact that it kept jumping from one character to the next, I didn't know whose inner thoughts I was listening to at the time. So I had to kind of keep backtracking through the audio to find out, wait, who's who am I listening to now? Uh, it got to the point where I just couldn't wait to finish it, and I wanted to finish it because I wanted to see if they ever reached the damn lighthouse. Uh, I don't know. If you guys have, if any of you have read this, uh, let me know down below what you thought about it. Or if there's another Virginia Woolf that you recommend that maybe I should give her another try. But overall, I didn't get this book at all. I only gave it one star. The next audiobook I listened to was Voyage of the Dawn Treader by C.S. Lewis. This is the um, chronologically the fifth book in the Chronicles of Narnia series. And uh, this one features Lucy and Edmund. Peter and Susan are elsewhere. And Lucy and Edmund are visiting their cousin Eustace, who is a very disagreeable character through this book. Uh, I'd like to see um, how his character developed through the story and he became a much likable person. Um, but yeah, he was tough going at the beginning. He just drove me nuts. Uh, and they're visiting uh, their cousin and they're all sort of looking at this painting of this ship and the rough seas and suddenly they're drawn into the picture and are find themselves floundering in the water and are pulled up onto the ship which is the Dawn Treader and they find that it is captained by Caspian who is now the king and he's sailing around trying to find um, seven friends of his late father who were at one time banished from Narnia. And the book is pretty interesting, pretty intriguing stories, but it got very repetitious. They sailed to an island, they find the person, they solve a problem, then they go to the next island. Rinse, repeat. Um, so it did kind of like get a little, little tedious after a bit, but I still enjoyed it overall and I enjoyed the story. We get to see Aslan again and Caspian, it was nice to see him back, um, now King. Um, and overall I gave that one four stars. The third audiobook for the month was um, the audio version of Scarlet by Marissa Meyer. This is the third, no, sorry, the second book in the Lunar Chronicles. Uh, the first book featured Cinder, who as a young child uh, was badly injured in a fire and had to have like cyborg uh, parts kind of grafted onto her. So she's considered, a, you know, even though part human, part mechanical, she's considered a cyborg. And it's sort of futuristic fairy tale retelling. And, uh, you know, Cinder had the whole thing with the evil stepmom and stepsister. One nice young stepsister that she got along with very well. And there's a prince, Prince Kai. He is um, the ruler, well, he soon will be the emperor of Earth. Uh, now that his father has perished from a um, plague that's like 100% fatal. Uh, he's having to deal also with the lunar faction ruled by Queen Levana. She wants to uh, force a union between Earth and uh, the Moon um, by forcing a marriage with this future um, Emperor. And uh, they have some interesting kind of powers, the Lunars do. And uh, I really liked that first book. I gave that one five stars. Uh, Scarlet, uh, we do see it. I apologize if the camera keeps jumping around, but it's on my bed and Skippy keeps moving underneath here. But um, I, I, the second book here, Scarlet, features another sort of retelling. In this case, we have uh, like a Little Red Riding Hood kind of retelling. We have Scarlet, who meets, uh, she's out trying to find um, her grandmother, who's been kidnapped. And she runs into this street fighter named Wolf, who seems to know some information about her grandmother. And even though she doesn't trust him so much, she uh, joins forces with him to hopefully uh, find her grandmother. Um, their story wasn't as interesting. It's sort of like half of this particular book and half the narrative. But we also get a return of Cinder, which I liked much better, um, her story part. Um, and eventually the two stories merge. But I found it kind of slow, um, not as intriguing as the first one. Like I said, I didn't care about 
Scarlet all that much anyway. Um, her grandmother's story is kind of interesting and the connection um, with Cinder. And I'll have to see where it goes. I know a lot of people told me this one is slow, but the next ones pick up much better. So I'll probably continue with the series, but overall I only gave this three stars. Moving on to some of the books. I read two manga. Um, Hour of the Zombie Part 4 by Tsukasa Saimura. I uh, won't get into details of this particular volume. Overall, it's just a story of a zombie plague that breaks out. It's focused on a school and three particular students. One young man, his girlfriend, and his um, best friend. Those two end up with this particular plague while he is okay. And it's a weird kind of version of the zombie plague where it kind of um, kind of shuts itself off every once in a while. And then it kicks back in. Like, and it's almost they can see what time it's going to... Uh, the people are going to switch back and become zombies again. Um, but of course, their bodies are undergoing lots of changes when they're in this zombie mode and attacking everybody. And um, they do some horrible things that they have to kind of, you know, deal with when they switch back to humans. Now, when his um, girlfriend and best friend uh, come down with this, he's desperate to try and, you know, find a way to reverse this. Because he can still see there's that bit of humanity in them and can they be saved? Uh, but there's factions that are kind of splitting the infected and the uninfected, and there goes the camera again. <laughs> um, so it's, it's, it'll be interesting to see if they're going to be able to reverse this or, you know, save uh, everybody. We'll see what happens. Uh, I gave that one five stars. And another five star read for me was this other manga, Corpse Party, Blood Covered, also the fourth in this series, and this is by Makoto Kedwin. Um, it's a horror manga, and it features a bunch of students trapped in this multi-dimensional world uh, of an elementary school that sits on the grounds of where their current school is. Um, it had been torn down. There were some um, awful things that had happened there, some deaths, uh, murder, and they're now encountering the ghosts of the people that were killed there, and they're kind of trapped and trying to find their way out. And I just love the artwork in it, and it's, uh, it's super creepy. And I can't wait to see where the rest of the story goes, so I highly recommend it if you like a good horror manga. Um, moving on from there, I just had a couple novels that I read, although this one's more of a screenplay. This is J.K. Rowling's uh, Fantastic Beasts uh, and Where to Find Them. Uh, this, of course, was written by her as opposed to the Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. I did not enjoy that one um, or the attempt to continue with the Harry Potter story. I like this one. It's set in the world but with all different characters. We meet a man named Newt Scamander. He um, is kind of visiting New York to um, acquire some magical beasts that he, he knows somebody that kind of deals with them. And he has this suitcase that has some uh, fantastic beasts in them as well. And something happens where they escape and suddenly they're running amok in New York. Uh, I liked the characters that we encounter in this and the storyline was very... Uh, very engaging, and I loved like kind of the revisiting of that whole uh, magical world. Uh, I think what this lacked though is this would have been good in a book format rather than a a screenplay version. Now I've not encountered the actual movie yet; I have yet to see it, so I can't make a comparison to which I like better. But I would have liked this more fleshed out into a novel form rather than just a screenplay. Uh, and I'm definitely looking forward to seeing the movie because if, what the clips I've seen seems really interesting. I, see, I saw enough clips to kind of put those characters in my mind when I was reading the book. So, uh, But I did overall enjoy it. It was a great return to it. And you can definitely see J.K. Rowling's influence in this as opposed to the lack of it in uh, The Cursed Child. So overall I gave this one four stars. And then the final book I read this month, which is actually the second part of The Lord of the Rings, um, and that is The Two Towers. And this one was, again, you know, the world building and character development in this is just beyond compare. Um, I have seen all the movies and now I'm working my way through the books finally. So again, I have the movie characters in my head and of course they're right on the cover anyway. Uh, this particular one has sort of split storyline where the first half of it was so exciting. We're following Legolas and Gimli and Aragon as they're um, kind of on the trail of um, Marion and Pippin, the two hobbits that were kidnapped by the orcs. They're hoping to rescue them. There's a major battle, lots of excitement, um, very fast flowing first half of the book. Then the second half of the book you meet um, Frodo and Sam, which are continuing on the journey to uh, bring the ring to Mordor and destroy it. And they are led, uh, kind of their tour guide is Gimli, or sorry, um, Gollum. 
uh, very untrustworthy, but that's about all they have. And uh, it's a much slower part to the story uh, until the very, very end when it sort of ramps back up again. But I think what this book lacks is the flow that the movie has where everything's sort of integrated. You you go from one um, action-packed fight scene to back to the Frodo. This splits those two into completely separate halves. So major excitement in the first half of the book, a bit of tedium in the second half. Although I do love Sam and Frodo's characters. Um, and the creepiness of Gollum, but it, it lacked the excitement of the first half. So I think it would have been more interesting if it was um, kind of flowed back and forth between those two um, narratives. So overall, I gave it four stars. So that was my wrap-up for February. Uh, again, let me know if anybody has read any of these books, what you thought about them, particularly Virginia Woolf, what your opinions are on the author, and if there's uh, another book that you recommend I give her a try, or did you feel the same way? Was she just... A little too confusing. <laughs> I don't know. But again, uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.